But at Le Mans in 1955, the traditional morning mass has special significance. And later, both Roman Catholics and Protestants join in prayer. Between 6 o'clock and 7, a tremendous fight between the Maserati and the Aston Martin. Number 16, Musso and Valenzano, number 23, Collins and Frere. The Aston got within 10 seconds of second place and then fell back. Now the amazing effort of the Porsches came to light and Polensky's one and a half litre car was six. But with sunrise came the rain. Water, rubber dust and oil combined to make the circuit like a skating rink. And still the leader reached 180 miles an hour along the straight and slithered through the curves to lap with the same cool constancy as in the dry. Behind races the Aston Martin. Only seconds separated it from the intruding Italian Maserati, which itself was closing on the leading car. But at mid-morning, as another lap went up to Collins and Frere, the Maserati failed to restart from its pit, and the red car no longer separated the green ones at the front. At noon on Sunday at Le Mans, it is difficult to realize that there are still four hours to go. The Hawthorne Buick Jaguar led by over 30 miles. Behind, the Aston Martin. Then Clays and Svartos. The Bristol team remained intact, dominating the two-litre class, but the five Porsches seemed unassailable in the 11 and 1500 classes. But the race at Le Mans is not over until 4 p.m. And with two and a half hours to go, there was concern in the Bristol pit. First, second and third places in the class for the second year running were at stake. Peter Wilson at the wheel reflects team manager Selby's anxiety. Last hour, and even disappointed drivers cannot tear their eyes from the road. Jaguar, Aston Jaguar, and in fourth place, the leading Porsche. On the Mulsan straight, the engines still scream up to maximum revs after 23 hours of racing. Drivers are deaf to everything except the roar of power. Eyes prickle, hands ache. The corners still rush up to meet them. The pits fill up. The time is a quarter to four. Officials man their stations ready for the finish. Again, a hush descends upon the crowd. The clock over the pits ticks up to four o'clock. Cinq, quatre, trois, deux, un. Les 24 heures du Mans sont terminées. 22 surviving cars, 13 of them British, roll up to the chequered flag in the order in which the closing seconds find them. Each gets its own applause from the enormous crowd, for to have finished at all in this race is a distinct achievement. The Bristols arrive in line ahead, their target achieved. The MGs are one short. The Porsches have scored a major triumph. Polensky and Frankenberg have won on Index of Performance, the Handicap Award, and thereby take their place with Hawthorne and Bueb, whose outright victory is unique. It is Jaguar's third Le Mans. Hawthorne holds the new lap record. They have covered a record distance of 2,569 miles. But Aston Martin, Bristol, MG, TR2, Fraser Nash, and the Little Cooper all wrote their names proudly in the story of that day.
The circuit of the Saat is quiet again. The struggle has slipped into motor racing history. In 24 hours, the world has turned with its sun and shadow. Le Mans 1955 has run its course.